everybody, it's Professor Williams again. Um, and this morning I'm going to look at creating those quantitative frequency distributions using Megastat. This won't take very long, but it sure is going to save you a ton of time. So um, let me go grab some data off of uh, my computer, flip over to Excel, and I'll see you there. Okay, um, what I've got is I've got 43 data points um, that are the ages, and I have no idea what these are ages of, but they're ages, um, and there are 43 of them, and what I want to do with them is I want to create a frequency distribution, a histogram, a frequency polygon, and an ogive, but I don't want it to take me a long time, and I don't want to have to use my calculator, so let me show you how we're going to do this. All right, um, I'm here in Excel, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Megastat add-in. If you if you guys can't tell, it it is really early for me, so you guys will just have to bear with me. Um, let me see, where am I? Okay, I'm going up here to add-ins is going to appear up here on your bar, on your menu bar, because you should have already gotten Megastat installed. I think that's even another video. And once I get to add-ins, I'm simply going to click on add-ins. At that point, you're going to see your Megastat tab. So it says Megastat. I'm simply going to click onto this and I'm going to get this menu and it's going to come down here to frequency distributions amazing isn't it and because what I have is quantitative data remember I said that I had the age of 43 people I'm going to come over and I'm going to use quantitative and I'm going to click right on that what it's going to do is it's going to open up this menu bar for me and I need a couple of pieces of information first I need what they're calling right here is the input range. It's simply Megastat saying, yeah, I'll do this for you, but where's the data? So I'm going to come over here to my spreadsheet, and I'm going to put my cursor in the first block that contains my data. I'm going to use my little plus thing here, and I'm simply going to scroll down collecting all of it. Remember, I really don't want to get in the habit of selecting the entire column because once I, if I do, I get a bunch of empty cells. So what it's done is over here, it simply inserted the address or the location of those cells. Now, I can be pushy and tell Megastat how wide I want my intervals. That would be if I had already determined how many classes I wanted, um, and I could force it to start the lower boundary of the first interval with a number that I choose. The nice thing is, is that Excel and Megastat are smart enough that they will let us leave those cells, those two boxes blank, and Megastat will put it into what it believes is the best arrangement. Over here, I want to make sure that I tell it, yes, I want a histogram, yes, I want a polygon, and yes, I want an ogive, because while I got it open, I might as well get everything done I need. So, the input range selected, three different graphs enabled, I'm going to let Megastat do the work for me. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to hit this button that says, OK. So, I hit OK. It thinks for a second, and magically, it appears in a new open workbook. So what has it given me? It's given me really literally everything I need. It's created six classes um, running from 40 to 45, up to but not including 45, all the way up to 70. It's calculated the class midpoint for me used a class width of 5. 
This is just the straight frequency, so there are two data points that appear in the range from 40 up to, but not including 45. For a total, remember I told you I had 42. This percentage um, column right here is rel really your relative frequency, simply saying that 2 out of 42 is 4.8%. This is that cumulative frequency, which is um, that running total. So when we get that running total, remember your cumulative frequency is going to be this frequency. And then we're going to add the frequency of the next class to it. We're going to come over here and we're going to get that 6. It's going to give us 8. And we're going to come over here and get this 12. It's going to give us 20. Come over here and get this 12, it's going to give us 32, pick up that 7 to 39, pick up that last 3, 42. Remember to double check for your cumulative frequency is that the last number in your cumulative frequency distribution should always equal the total number of observations in your set. The other thing it's done is it's done a cumulative relative frequency distribution where it's done the exact same thing with the percentages. 4.8, it's picked up the next one to come to 19%, picked up the next one to come to 47.6%. Remember the check for relative frequency or cumulative frequency is that this last number needs to add up to 100% or 1 the same way that this one adds up to 100% or 1. Let me just show you real quickly the other three graphs that um, it created for you, and then I'll let you guys get back to whatever else you were doing. All right, so the other thing, because we checked those three boxes, it gave us a histogram, gave us a frequency polygon, and it gave us our ogive. Remember that the histogram plots the class boundaries on the x-axis. The frequency polygon does the percentage or the relative frequency. Frequency polygons are often known as relative frequency polygons. And our ogive, remember the ogive is the cumulative frequency distribution. I told you cumulative frequencies were always going to end up at a hundred percent since they always start at 0%, move up to 100%. Ogives are graphs that always rise. Frequency polygons, on the other hand, since they just do frequency, they're always anchored back to the x-axis so that they are a closed polygon geometric figure. So that is literally all there is to creating those frequency distributions using Megastat. I hope that this helps you, and I look forward to seeing you guys around the net. Have a great day.